So today, Ellie De La Cruz is making his debut for the Cincinnati Reds. And the Reds are putting faith in him, hitting him clean up, and making him one of the youngest in MLB history to make his debut and hit fourth in the lineup. Some people are even calling Ellie De La Cruz a unicorn like one of a kind. So here we are, Ellie De La Cruz, the third baseman for the Cincinnati Reds. I mean, look at him. And on screen is going to be the one that I downloaded from the ball. So you guys can all get him and add him to your roster. But here we go. This is this is what we've got. We've got him going 99 arm elite speed. The power probably could be a little bit higher, but at the same time, I felt like I didn't want to just juice him up to be a 99 overall. And I feel like this is where we are. So June 6th, here we are with the Reds. And we've got Ellie De La Cruz, Steer, you know, McLean, Senzel, who's currently injured. Um, I actually think they, they kind of rock like this in the outfield. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. We've got we got the bench that looks like the bench. You know, this is this is the squad. So what I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna let the CPU handle everything. Whatever happens, happens. But you know what? We gotta see Ellie in his debut. Debut against the Los Angeles Dodgers. What a way, what a team that you have to make your debut against. And here we go, Ellie De La Cruz making his major league debut. Like I said, one of the most hyped up prospects in a long time. Ellie De La Cruz making his debut against Clayton Kershaw, man, on first two outs. What is going to be the outcome here? It is going to be a pitch, a little low in the zone, but it's a strike. Second pitch to Ellie De La Cruz. How are we looking? And base knock is that what's gonna happen in real life today i i don't know the, the video is gonna come out after he probably makes his debut but you guys will know there it is first major league hit for ellie de la cruz so second at bat man on first and second or men on first and second and one out come on blue you can't be calling that up that high ellie de la cruz is like six foot four that's a big zone that's a big zone so here we are oh one but you know what I'm feeling pretty good about this. Maybe get the first RBI for Ellie De La Cruz. Let's see what happens. Can he deliver? And just miss. 0-2. Clayton Kershaw is a tough matchup to make on your debut, but how is it gonna turn out? It is. He did not swing. Whew. One, two. Can Ellie deliver in the clutch? Does he have the clutch gene? Take strike three. But the Reds ended up delivering in that inning, got one run across, and Ellie De La Cruz is up for his third AB, and Kershaw's kind of dotting for Ellie. It's getting a little difficult. I gotta, I gotta see some action. Let's get a home run. Let's get an extra base hit. Let's see that power in play. Oh, blue. So a quick 0-2 count. Can he deliver here? He, okay, good at. One, two, count, can the rookie deliver and fouls it off. Okay, stays alive. Still one, two, and all right, good eye once again. Two, two, working the count. So the pitch on the two, two count and goes down swinging once again. Ooh, it's tough. This is going to be Ellie De La Cruz's final at bat of the game. Bottom eight, Yancy Almonte has come into pitch, take over for Kershaw. Starts him out with the ball. I mean, the Reds hold a slim lead right now. So to get the win would be co pretty good. But I want to see Ali De La Cruz do a little bit more at the plate. A single on your debut is good. But we got to even it out. Two Ks, one single. Let's at least get one more hit. So 2-1, pretty favorable. Come on. I Let's, let's see something big here. Our, oh, I thought he had an identical hit to the first one. He's going to end up one for four on the day. But you know what? Not a terrible debut. So 2-2 two, two count down to the final strike for the Dodgers. Alexis Diaz is coming in and strikes out Max Muncy. So Ellie De La Cruz does get the win on the first day. Or at least the team wins. But the at-bats wasn't too great. But he did get a single on his first at-bat. So I mean, you know the crowd went crazy for that. So with his debut out of the way, let's see how the first season finishes. And if ELD... E Ellie De La E D L C. I'm just gonna call him Ellie De La Cruz or Ellie. We'll see how he does in his first season. So we're at the All Star break, and as you can see, the Reds are at 500. But I figured let's take a look. Let's see how Ellie De La Cruz is doing in the lineup. It's been almost or just over a month, and they've actually moved him to the leadoff spot. And 272 average. So contact versus left has dipped a little bit, but everything else has gone up. MLB stats, 25 games, 28 hits, seven doubles, two triples, and five home runs along with 17 RBIs. Strikeout numbers have always been a problem for him, but the on-base percentage is a little low. The average and the OPS is good though. So, so far, not too bad for the rookie. So let's see, is he hitting leadoff? He's not in the lineup for his lefties. That's that's kind of tough. Can I can I sneak him in there? Maybe do a little something like that. 
I feel like he's got to be in the lineup versus lefties. So like, that's the whole point. You know what? Let's do... I normally don't get involved, but this guy's... This guy's, you know, like, kind of a big deal. We got to have him in the lineup. No wonder why his lefty numbers are going down. Let's finish off the year. It looks like a position has opened up because now Jonathan India is going to the Dodgers for Gavin Stone. So a young pitcher to the Reds. It looks like they're trying to build up some crazy young rotation. Interesting. The Reds have traded their closer, Alexis Diaz, for Royce Lewis and David Festa. Interesting. Interesting. Especially how good Alexis Diaz is. I don't know about that one. So season one is in the books and the Reds unfortunately had kind of a tough year. But we're not here for the Reds. We're here to see what Ellie De La Cruz was up to. So no award, which is a little disappointing, wasn't even in the mix for Rookie of the Year, which kind of says something. But he did get a late start starting the year in June and he finished off at a 77 overall. So now, not bad though. Like everything is positive at least in terms of attribute growth and 342 at-bats, played 88 games in total with 22 doubles, 10 home runs, 3 triples, a 243 average, 292 on base percentage, and a 704 OPS. So definitely cooled down as the year went on. And that's a possibility with Ellie De La Cruz. Like the ceiling is very, very high, but the strikeout numbers have always been an issue. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But the speed is elite. We've got a crazy arm, crazy position flexibility, and the battle develop for sure. So I'm not too worried about it in your first season. It's going to be, it's going to be a good career. So season's in the book. Let's get to season two. So for season two, the Reds went in an interesting direction with this lineup and just team in general. I think they went with the whole like veteran presence thing. David Peralta, JD Martinez, you got Jason Hayward. Interesting route to go. They also brought in Kevin Biggio, which is an interesting one. I feel like Spencer Steer's got to get in this lineup somehow. We got to go maybe like like that. I feel like that's that's the right move. And then yeah, we'll, the lefty lineup's about as good as it's going to get. But the pitching is about what you'd expect. It's 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 not great, but it's something, right? It's something. So, yeah, we'll see how they do. So, I wanted to check if we had an all-star appearance for Ellie De La Cruz. Sadly, we did not. But, you know what? Just a quick little peek. Up to an 81, which is awesome to see. And he's actually doing fairly well. Just a quick little glance. You guys can take a peek. But, I mean, it's a pretty good year. So, season two went about as much as, about as what you'd predict it would be. 66 and 96? Like, come on. I mean, when you got Jason Hayward, JD Martinez, and, uh, 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 David Peralta as your starting outfield. I feel like you're you're, you're kind of setting yourself up for uh, a little bit of a bad situation. But no awards once again, which is a little disappointing. Somehow Patrick Wisdom won MVP. I mean, we could check to see if we got maybe like a Silver Slugger. I doubt it. He came in second though. Came in second though. So pretty impressive. Also, hold on. An MVP for Patrick Wisdom, but didn't get the Silver Slugger is, is interesting. I mean, oh, because he was playing DH. That makes sense now. What about the gold glove? Nope, wasn't even close. Okay, that's fine. Alrighty, anyways, Ellie de, la Clu Ellie de la Cruz up to an 82 overall. You can see the numbers are jumping up like crazy. Sadly, he's not going to earn any quirks. It's just the way MLB The Show works this year, which I don't understand. And I mean, 27 doubles, 27 home runs, 6 triples, 144 hits, almost 90 RBIs, walked quite a bit, struck out quite a bit as well, but you know what? 26 stolen bases, and that's a pretty solid season. Definitely think you would take that from him, and let's see, a 4 war compared to the negative war that he had the year before, pretty solid, pretty solid. So year 2 in the books, it looks like some of the younger guys are starting to make their debuts as well, so maybe the Reds are heading in the right direction with their team, but I feel like if we gotta make this team good, we might have to step in and help out Ellie De La Cruz and the Reds. For season 3, I may have made one, one little addition to this roster. And normally I don't like to get involved, but I felt like for someone like Ellie De La Cruz, it'd be a little bit fun to make this team a little bit better, and the addition I made was of course Juan Soto on a max deal for the next 10 years. I just felt like for these kind of player sims, career sims, whatever they are, yeah, we're here for Ellie De La Cruz, but of course we want to see him win some World Series and just kind of grow as a team. So let me know what you guys think down below. Should I make more change? Like, should I be more involved in these career sims or should I just let the CPU handle everything? Let me know down below. And on top of that, if you're enjoying the video, hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and of course just drop a comment if you're excited about the debut of Ellie De La Cruz. So 77 and 80 five season and season three for the reds we do have a league leader 
not for anybody that we want to see. What about an award? A rookie of the year for a first baseman, but not, not our guy, Ellie, who did finish second in the Silver Slugger behind Austin Riley once again, who hit 42 home runs. What about a what about a Gold Glove? Maybe maybe a little. No, sadly. So let's take a look at season three for Ellie De La Cruz. It looks like the Reds have added Andy Pajes from the Dodgers in a trade. And looking at this team, it's like a it's kind of an interesting squad. Like Jay Allen, only see potential but fairly young. You've got Soto, you got Stevenson, you got Pajes, you got Ellie De La Cruz, the rookie of the year in Ryan Ward. You got Royce Lewis, who's got some decent potential. And Kevin Biggio is probably like, what, 29 by now? Matt McClain, how much time is he getting? None. Okay, uh, yeah. Noel V. Marte, barely any time as well. Interesting, interesting. And then, of course, a pitching staff of Hunter Green, Lodolo, Gavin Stone, Ashcraft, and Festa. Where's, there he is, Andrew Abbott. Has he had any time? Mostly out of the bullpen. Okay. All right. So an interesting way to go about things for the Reds. But let's see what our guy, Ellie De La Cruz, is doing. 86 overall. He looks pretty solid. 173 hits, which is awesome to see. It looks like he's getting in more games, more at bats. 43 doubles, 23 home runs, 22 stolen bases. I'm liking what I'm seeing for sure. We maybe get that slugging up a little bit higher, that OPS a little bit higher. And I think we're looking at a superstar for sure. 2.6 war, a little disappointing. Oh, 10 errors. Goodness. Woo. Man, we gotta we gotta work on that that fielding for sure. For sure. But the hitting stats look really well rounded, really solid. I mean 20 plus home runs, 40 doubles. That's pretty impressive. So so far, we're looking good. We just gotta get the reds to the postseason now. Season four and Ellie De La Cruz could still not get into the the all-star game which i find kind of crazy considering he's actually doing really really well really well i mean he, he does have to face 212 they're getting nolan arenado in there when he's hitting 212 look at ellie de la cruz up to an 89 right 90 almost 100 hits he's got 23 doubles 15 home runs he's hitting 312 with a 934 ops are the cardinals that bad that that is their representative they're in second in the division. Like, clearly, there's got to be somebody else that they could get in there. Ellie De La Cruz is getting robbed. So the Reds end up being a wild card team in season four, and we get our first taste of playoff baseball for the Reds. League leaders, not Ellie De La Cruz, sadly. Uh, what about an award? Soto MVP and a rise gets the batting title. What about what about a silver slugger? Again, Austin Riley just beats out Ellie De La Cruz. I mean, just beats out his using it loosely i mean he definitely was the better hitter at third base that's a that's a tough competition that he has to face every year but ellie de la cruz up to a 90 and still kind of hitting fifth sixth in the lineup you can kind of see oh he's actually leading off first lefties but 90 overall continuing to develop like crazy and the hits just shy of his uh career high Doubles, almost 40. Home runs, 26. 114 RBIs is a career high for sure. Good amount of walks, a career high. And stolen bases at 18. Just shy of hitting 300 with a 368 on base percentage and an 891 OPS. Very, very impressive for the 24-year-old. Hopefully, the errors went down. It definitely did at a war of 5.5. So if we can get the errors down, make them a little bit better of a fielder, we definitely have a crazy player on our hands. But with this Reds team starting to kind of be nice ellie arise soto tyler stevenson's up to a 90 pajes is up to an 81 noel v marti marte is a 79 i mean they've got royce lewis at 78 oh okay 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 i like the team i like the team a lot i mean this is a pretty good squad i feel like they've got they've got something going and i mean even the pitching still fairly young kopek lodolo green you've got Matt Strom, apparently, Gavin Stone, Tyone is with the squad of Manai. Okay, they're making some moves. So postseason baseball time, let's see how they do against the Cubs. They get the first one, they get the second, and they move on to the next round to face the Braves. Can they do it? Can they do it? They're still going. Still alive, Hunter Green, Spencer Strider, and they move on to face the Padres. Oh, man, can they do it? One to two. Okay, two to two, three to two, one game away from a World Series, and they fall just short, just short. Let's see how Ellie did in the postseason, and 236, two home runs, seven RBIs, so maybe just a little first-time jitters 
offensively as a whole, the team kind of really, really lacked. I feel like that's what kind of held them back. So, you know what? Not a bad showing for the Reds. One game short of the World Series. I think that's pretty good. All right, season five, another postseason appearance, this time against the Dodgers, what might be a little bit more of a difficult task, but we'll see what they can do. Michael Kopech was pretty good pitching wise. Ellie De La Cruz had the most doubles in baseball, and he actually had a really rough start to the season. So I'd be surprised if he was even close to like a silver slugger. Second, again, again, that's tough. Um, I doubt he won a gold glove. I, I We could check. But I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, yeah, he's not even in the mix. All right. So, like I said, he did get off to a slow start. He wasn't in the mix for a all-star appearance. But you know what? 93 overall at the age of 25. Technically season five. But, I mean, it, MLB service time, it's only four and a little bit because he only played 88 games in the first year. Wouldn't that make it four and a half MLB service time? Because 162 divided by two. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, we're kind of... I mean, I, I guess. I don't know. I guess maybe they go by at-bats. Maybe they go by at-bats rather than games. I, I would assume they go by at-bats. That would make a little bit more sense. So, okay. Which, whatever. Whatever, right? He still had a had a good year, though. You know, 23 home runs. So, he's kind of sitting around that low 20 range. Crazy amount of doubles, though. This guy is a doubles machine. Stealing bases at a pretty good level, too. And again, just like a good average, good on base percentage. He is just a solid player. And to be honest, yeah, there's a lot of hype around him. And I feel like we kind of need to tone down the hype a little bit. He has all the tools to be a superstar, a crazy good player. But when you when you hype up a player a little bit too much, you know, obviously you just can never live up to those expectations. And I feel like that's kind of what happened at the start of Vlad Guerrero's career, right? He struggled a little bit off the gate. You know, that first year, first like year and a half was a little, little bit of like a, oh man, he's not his dad type stuff. And so then he started to hit the ball well and he started to become a very solid first baseman. And I feel like that's what you got to do with some of these young prospects, just because they're really good in AAA or just because they're really good in AA or wherever it is, it doesn't translate to the major leagues automatically. You know, there is going to be an adjustment. There is going to be a time where they're going to look good, then they're going to look bad, and then they're going to look bad maybe for a streak, and then they're going to look good again. And I feel like with um, the difference between AAA and the majors is a big jump. So I'm, I'm excited to see what Ellie De La Cruz can do. It's always exciting to have a player that just has all the tools to be a superstar and you 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 want them to you want them to play out even as a cubs fan i want i want the reds to have a superstar i want to see a superstar in baseball and elliot de la cruz you know can be that but with that let's get back to the videos sake and again he's he's a really solid player in this lineup up to a 93 overall so again postseason baseball and they're eliminated right off the rip i mean a lot of runs scored but mostly for the dodgers so there's that so playoffs didn't go well um, but again two two postseason appearances back to back that's a good start Nick Lodolo hitting free agency um I'm, I'm gonna step in here and I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a I'm gonna give him a deal hopefully he signs that the other ones I'm not too worried about if they go they go I really hope they don't offer any other other contracts okay Interest, interesting what moves they made there. Did Lodolo sign the contract? He did not. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But we've got a few more years before Ellie De La Cruz becomes a free agent. So let's keep moving. But it only took until 2028 for Ellie De La Cruz to finally make it to a, uh, not a World Series, an all-star game. At 95 overall, you can see we're, we're going to have some career numbers for sure. And I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. So let's finish off the season. So no postseason for the Reds. Not good. Not good. League leaders Soto with runs. What, what about an award? MVP for Soto. Okay, can we get a silver slugger? We finally get a silver slugger for Ellie De La Cruz, who eclipses 30 home runs for the first time in his career. Sadly, no gold glove. All right, all right. We're, we're getting somewhere, though. 98 overall. Look at those attributes. Woo! And like I said, no quirks, though. So I think he's got one more year of arbitration and then he becomes a free agent. So there, there will be that, but 169 hits, 37 doubles. So again, just a doubles machine, nine triples, 36 home runs, which is a career high. 
just shy of 100 RBIs and then 17 stolen bases. So the stolen bases went down a little bit, but 287, 351 with a 915 OPS. This is definitely a career year and I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Eight errors, which which kind of sucks, even though like fielding wise, he's not, he's not too bad and a 5.3 war, but I mean, the guy's putting up really good numbers. It's just the team kind of sucks, uh, which is disappointing. But you know what? This is all about the, uh, Ellie De La Cruz. And I feel like we're looking pretty solid. So first all-star appearance. It only took a while. No rookie of the year or anything like that, which is super disappointing. But you know what? At, le at least we're starting to acquire some accolades. We have our second all-star appearance in back-to-back -back seasons. I believe this is technically season seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He is a free agent after this year. I'll, I'll call it season seven since technically we're, we're basically in season seven. He's had he's had about seven seasons to play the game. Six and a half if you want to be real technical about everything. But you know what? Another all-star appearance. All right, so the season's over again. No postseason or anything like that. And uh, sadly, I don't think we won an award either. Yeah, yeah, no... I mean, we've, we've had one, what's it called? A Silver Slugger, but that's really about it. I mean, he did have a little bit of a down year if you want to be like technical about it. But I mean, it was still a, a pretty decent year. 31 home runs, 28 doubles, 152 hits, 110 RBIs. The average is a little low for his, you know, his career average, but our base percentage and OPS, pretty solid. So yeah, a couple stats did go down. We've hit 99, so we've, we've kind of seen... The capped out version of Ellie De La Cruz, which I think is a pretty solid player. I do want to check something because I know that throughout the years, things happen where like potential does drop. It's still at a 99. So like we, we still have, you know, potentially he could go up a little bit. He could go down a little bit. I know once players kind of hit like the 30 mark, some stats go up and then they kind of drop quite a bit. But he's hitting his free agent season and um, I'm, I'm interested to see what happens. You know, the, the Reds really haven't done much the last couple seasons so is he gonna return to the Reds? like also do they have the money because they've been spending a little bit so let's see what happens it is on auto we gotta let the cpu decide did they go after ellie de la cruz and it doesn't look like they did so what'll be the next stop for ellie de la cruz the second the second half of his career is he gonna stay in cincinnati so there wouldn't be a new stop or is there a new destination for his career well here it is he is signed with the tampa bay rays on a pretty big contract as well i think this is what eight seasons yeah eight seasons eight, eight, eight years is the right way to say it but i mean yeah he's tampa bay ray now all right, so obviously the all-star break, I want to see if Ellie De La Cruz made it with the team that he is with now, which is the Tampa Bay Rays. Kind of forgot who it was for a second, but no. Okay, so let's go take a look and see how he's doing with his new team. He is down to a 98. Interesting. Okay, so whoa, that's not what you want to see. 88 hits, 18 doubles, 12 home runs. I mean, again, not a bad season. Like he's super consistent, which is which is cool. Like that that's perfectly fine. Like that's what you want to see. But regressing, I, I mean, I don't think we're gonna see a crazy regression. I think we're pretty good. But you know what? Ellie De La Cruz, new team. Seems weird. The season's over. Let's see how he finished off with the Rays, who didn't make the postseason. Uh oh. But I mean, he's getting paid, but 98 overall. So, okay, like, uh, that's not what you want to see. But 31 doubles, 30 home runs, 12 triples, which is a career high, and just shy of 100 RBIs, and a, a pretty decent amount of walks as well. So, and honestly, though, still a pretty strong season. So, it's not like he had a bad year at all. It was just no, no postseason, right? Um, interesting squad. You know, they've got Wander, Josh Lowe. Jackie Perry, which looks like a player that they drafted, actually looks pretty decent. Hasn't made hasn't made an appearance yet. What else? Mansardo, Isaac, Owen Casey, Bobby Valdez. It, it's an interesting squad, and then the pitching is definitely strange as well. It looks like a lot of drafted players are now starting to make their debut. So we'll see how they do. Where did they stand in the East? They were last. Ooh, okay. All right. So league leaders, I'm not worried about. Let's go take a look at the awards on the other side so what about a little little sil silver slugger action no any anything else like did he was he close on anything no all right fair fair all right what 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 year was that was that number seven i believe that was number seven maybe number eight now that was number eight we got two more years in year nine ellie's back at his normal 
normal stuff 313 average decent amount of home runs rbis back at the all-star game love to see it ellie de la cruz brings home another silver slugger this time this time in the al this time in the al which is awesome to see beats out devers and colson montgomery yeah not not a gold glove no other awards either which is a little disappointing like no mvps like he's not even been in the race for one but my thing is like with him he's been super consistent so like, I'm not even mad about it. Like doubles through the roof, home runs. He's, he, I was expecting a little bit more, but at the same time, like just like a really good average, really good on base percentage, really good OPS. The man just delivers. Good amount of RBIs and walks as well. Like the guy's just a strong player in the lineup hitting like three, four in a lineup is just like where you want him. Like he's gonna be a good player, super consistent. And like he never really blew us away with a specific season. I mean, maybe the 52 double season, but realistically, like he's just been very consistent and one of those guys that you definitely want in your team. Sadly, no postseason appearance for Tampa Bay, but I mean, you know what? It's it's been good. It's been good. So we've got one more year to see what he can put up in a 10-year career, and then we'll see how he finishes off his 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 career. So in season 10, Ellie De La Cruz makes another all-star appearance, which is awesome to see. And he's even gone up a little bit in terms of overall. Like I said, once a player hits like 30, 31, 32, they always get a little bit of a boost offensively and like attribute wise. They always get like a little bit of a power surge. They always get a little bit of a like, they just get like a, like a little bit of like the fountain of youth. They took a little, little drink out of it. And somehow just find like a crazy season it always happens and then and then they fall off a cliff and forget how to play baseball but so far so good all right season's over and i mean again like he's he, like doubles he led the league in doubles he's just a doubles machine and home runs there we go that's what i'm talking about awards let's see finally we get an mvp for ellie de la cruz it only took 10 years but i'm super happy about that and you can see he's getting he's getting a little bit of a you know, like I said, he's just getting like a little little rejuvenation into his career. Career year. Look at that. RBIs, home runs. I think that ties a career high in 36. 10 triples, 50 doubles, 203 hits. How many years left on his contract? Quite a few. But hey, that is a career year for sure. And in 10 seasons, he's going to finish with a 45 war on the dot. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see a lot. So 10 seasons. I mean, that's pretty good, right? Like, let's go take a look and let's compare him to the other players, player stats um, around the league. Let's see. Let's go like this. Career-wise, let's see where he is hits-wise. I didn't, even, I didn't even see where he was hits-wise. He is... Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, man. This is, is he even going to be on the list? There he is. He's at 1591 in 10 seasons, which realistically has he had 10 years no he's really had nine but we've we've kind of seen a 10 season length career so far so i mean 1591 in terms of hits let's see where he is home runs wise he had like two something so he's gonna be pretty far compared to some of these others who have had some pretty long careers as well some of them have had three four five years on him at this point so i think he had like what 269 i think it said so you can kind of see the other names that he's around. He has 918 RBIs, which I have a feeling is going to be like pretty high. But again, these guys are having three, four years on him. So if we, we kind of, we're kind of keeping pace with a lot of these other top players in baseball with 918. I mean, that's pretty good. Steals, he's going to be up there for sure, which is awesome to see. He really is a 5-2 player where he's 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 walking, he's getting hits, stealing bases. Like he's just, he's got it all. He's got it all. So Tampa Bay did make the postseason this time. Let's go take a look and see how they do. And they are going to be moving on to the next round. Let's see how they do against the Royals. Sweep the Royals. And now they're in the World Series. How are they going to do? How are they going to do? One, three, still alive, still alive. Game seven, a rainy day on game seven of the World Series and we're in for a doozy. It's going to be an interesting one for sure. The Rays versus the Giants in the World Series. Okay. Ellie De La Cruz is going to be batting fourth for Tampa Bay. Let's see how it goes. So I'm just going to pretend like I'm the Rays. I'm not going to get too involved. I'll just make pitching changes when need be. But I'm more so interested in seeing how De La Cruz plays. So we're just going to, we're going to pitch. We're going to pitch. We're going to pitch. Runner was thrown out going home and it's Ellie time. 
So first pitch to Ellie De La Cruz of the World Series, or at least Game 7 of the World Series, and he takes it inside. So 2-0, hitters count. What are we looking for here? Down in the zone, 3-0. Is he going to have the green light? Leading off the second, I mean, it's 0-0. I mean, a home run here would be electric to start the game off. But you know what? Take a walk. So with Ellie De La Cruz on first, Wander brings him in, and it's a 1-0 game to the race. And two runs are brought in by Nathaniel Lowe, and now it's 3-0, 4-0, and back to the top of the lineup where nothing else is going to happen. But it's back to Ellie De La Cruz. So with an 88% win expectancy, the Rays are like in prime position to win for nothing he won the hank aaron award this year apparently didn't even see that in the award section and he's only hitting 230 in the world series which isn't the best so i don't think we're gonna see a world series mvp unless he pops off for like three home runs this game and he's just a little early on that one just a little bit early so one two count one out come on we gotta have some world series magic here for the man all right, good eye. 2-2, two, two, here we go, and Ellie is gonna pull it foul once again. And here's the pitch, up in the zone, full count. He's worked it full, good at bat so far. And here it is, takes another walk. So Wander, once again, double play, it's over. So, so far, so good, uh-oh. Shane McClanahan in a little bit of trouble. Double play gets him out of it though, and the Rays are threatening once again. Run scores, top of the lineup, a pop-up. A walk, pitching change, two run score, runners on the corners with two outs in a 7-2 game, and it's Ellie De La Cruz time. So let's see what he can do with two on, two out, and a pitch right down the middle of the zone, and it's going to be an RBI for De La Cruz. RBI single, there we go, that's what we've been waiting for, it's nothing too crazy, but he got the job done, brought in another insurance run, I'm surprised he didn't pull that one, 450 down the right field line, that was a hanger. And let's see how it finishes. Shane McClanahan's probably done after that inning. I feel like that's that's probably a good spot to call it. He's well, he's got actually quite a few, quite a little bit of energy left. And I'm I'm gonna get greedy here. Run scores gets out of the inning anyway. So a double leads it off. Josh Lowe is up. Jackie Perry keeps the inning alive. So same situation as last time, and we're only in the sixth. Ellie De La Cruz with runners on the corners. Eight three game. A really similar pitch this time he's just a little early on it so a 2-1 count ellie's looking good good at bats taking pitches not swinging at balls and as i say that he swings at a ball so 2-2 two, two with two outs can keep the inning alive what is it gonna be it is it's gonna get through it's gonna be another rbi for ellie de la cruz another rbi single first and second i mean this one's gotta be over so McClanahan's day is done with a 9-3 lead, and it's looking pretty good here. Two more runs come in. The Giants are just getting absolutely dominated. Like, it is it is so bad. It is so bad. Lead off triple. Don't even score the run. And Ellie De La Cruz is up once again. 0-1 with one out. Swings at a pitch down in the zone. 0-2. Is this going to be the first time Ellie gets out in this game? I mean, 2-for-2 two two with two walks is pretty impressive already. And... He swings at a bad pitch. Yeah, not great. All right, so the Giants are threatening here. Sack fly brings in a run, but I don't think it's really gonna matter in the end. Like, it's it's looking it's looking pretty pretty much over. Pretty pretty much over. Yeah, and then pitching change just to make sure that we close it out here for the Rays. A single, oh, but double play, and it's down to the final out. Oh, one count to start it off. Throws it outside, not ideal. 2-1 count, can Jake, Jake Harry, I need you to close it out here, man. There's two outs, two outs right here. But get a ground ball, get a fly out, get something. That's a good pitch, okay. Little dangerous, almost right down the middle. Full count, down to their last out, down by 10, and all right, stays alive. Full count again, here we are, and Elie De Cruz gets his first M MVP World Series. I mean, maybe MVP too. So there it is. The Rays win a World Series and the 10th season of Ellie De La Cruz. He gets his first one as well. And I feel like that's a good point to end it. 10 years in the making and a World Series. Let's go see if he wins a World Series MVP and wrap up his career. 
So no World Series MVP, no postseason MVP. It looks like he was kind of quiet for the whole the whole run. Let's see, 250 average, six home runs and 13 RBIs though. And I'd say, again, a pretty solid career. So let's finish off his career. Let's see what happens. And I'll see you guys once he retires. 2045 finally have retirement for Ellie De La Cruz. He hasn't played in about eight seasons, but um, 44 years old, 49 overall. And like I said, he hasn't played for quite some time. Last five seasons, six technically. So six years, hasn't played. Had a stint with the Rangers, you know, obviously played out his career with Tampa Bay. And was solid, right? Like he's he finished with just shy of uh, 450 home runs, just over 2,700 hits, good amount of doubles, good amount of RBIs, good amount of walks too, stolen bases at 358, and finished with a 279 average and an 853 OPS. Again, it's just like a very consistent, well-rounded career. Like nothing too crazy, but to be honest, if you can get this kind of season, like day, like every single year from a player like this, I feel like that's that's good. That's that's a that's a good player. I mean, like look at the final years he had with Tampa Bay, hit over 300 with like a crazy OPS. So like insane numbers. Only one World Series. He did tack on one more MVP during this this time that, that I simmed, but that was really about it. He finished with a 75.5 WAR. And that's the end of uh, Ellie De La Cruz's career. And he's a Hall of Famer. So there it is. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content. And of course, get in the comment section down below. Let me know if you want me to be a little bit more involved in these types of videos. Are you excited about Ellie De La Cruz being in the majors? I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace.